So the culling service is a service used to optimize your yin. So you can cull base parts and attachments within range and within the field of view and assign functions to those objects that are culled in and out. At the moment, only attachments and base parts are eligible to be culled. Models will be in the future, but right now um, it's just attachments and base parts. Another thing is that this is strictly a client-based service, so using this on the server won't do anything for you and it'll probably cause errors, so do not use this on the server. Now, behind the scenes, Culling Service utilizes Roblox's collection service with their tags to track objects of a certain tag entering and leaving the camera's field of view, as well as the object's relative distance from the player's character. This is extremely useful for conserving the Lua heap and the memory, as memory being conserved for visual things that you don't see is a waste of memory space, and it also helps with the rendering system because if you use it right, and I'll show you guys later on in the video, the rendering system will have a lot easier time rendering your scenes, causing less lag. Now, each subscribed tag has their own call radius, call interval, and static property. Um, the call radius tells the calling service to ignore parts beyond a certain stud length. Uh, beyond a certain stud length, um, the default value is 50 studs, and you can change this through the set call radius method. The call interval tells the calling service when to update parts of a specific tag. The default value is 0.1 seconds. So for example, every 0.1 seconds, the uh, calling service will look for instances that have entered the view and for instances that have left, and then it will then uh, fire the corresponding signals according to the instances tags. You can change the call interval through the set call interval method. The static property tells the calling service whether or not to update based on if the camera has moved or not. So the default value is true. And if this property is true, then at every call interval, the calling service will check if the camera's moved. If it has, then it'll start looking for which objects have been called in and out. And if it's not, then at every call interval, the calling service will disregard whether the camera has moved and it will check for instances anyway. Set this property to false if you're going to deal with moving objects, otherwise keep it set to true. To install this, you can access it from Roblox with this link here. Um, right now, I think it's private, yeah, but it'll be public by the time we get this video out. And then you can require it with a local script and here's a sample piece of code uh, requiring the calling service. Then I give you guys some examples here on the GitHub page and an API if you want to look at what each function of calling service does. So I want to test this out on one of my old building projects. So I'm going to open it up and see what I can do with it. So I've entered this old building project of mine. And after taking some look around, I've noticed that two things I can, there are two things I can use to optimize this a little bit better. One is the particles. Um, the rendering system still accounts for particles even when you look away. Um, even though it doesn't draw the actual particle itself, um, it still has to calculate where it is, what size it is, uh, what stage on the animation it's in, etc. So I'm going to be optimizing the particles because there are a lot of these and there are also a lot of transparent parts in here. So um, the rendering system also hates transparent parts. It either likes opaque or fully transparent. So I'm going to be um, changing these to be opaque when you look away. When you look back, they will be um, back to their semi-transparent look. And yeah, that's all I've seen for um, this map. Anything else is, everything else is either not um, compatible with the calling service or it's just there. It's not um, affecting the game too much. So first things first is create the tags. So I'm going to create an, um, a tag for the fire and a tag for the window. So I'm going to do that real quick. 
and then I'm going to assign each of the uh, parts the corresponding tag. So for this one, it's an emit part. Um, it's a part named emit with a fire particle. And then for the window, it is, let's see, for the window, it is a semi-transparent semi part with a name of glass. So it's gonna be tedious to assign all of these a certain tag, so I'm just gonna do it through a script. And put it in the command line. So here we go. So now we have the command that we want to use. This basically loops through every single object in the workspace and checks if its name is either emit or glass, and then it assigns it the corresponding tag. So I'm going to copy this and paste this into the command bar and run. No errors, that's good. And then I'm going to check. So if we hit this, we, hit, we can see it has the window tag. And then if we hit an emitter part, or a part that emits everything, then we can see that it has the emitter tag. So we have that set up. Now we're going to need the actual uh, scripts for it. So we're going to need, I'm going to have it go ahead and delete this because we don't need that anymore. We're going to need the coding service module. So I'm going to grab that and put that into replicated storage. And then we also need a local script for the actual uh, functionality of it. So let's make a local script. I'm going to call it color since we're going to be calling things. And in this script, we're going to need the calling service. So And then we're going to check if the game is loaded. For each tag, we're going to have two um, signal connections. We're going to have a cold in and a cold out connection for each one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the variables for those connections. And now we're going to set up each uh, each calling service tag with each of these collection service tags. So we're going to set up the emitter tag and the window tag. As you know, the um, the default values of the radius is 50 studs but I want that to be a, a lot larger. I want that to be around 200 studs. So I'm gonna change that for each one. And I like the cold intervals, so I'm gonna keep them at that. Now for the actual connections, so we're gonna connect each emitter cold in, or each cold in and cold out connection to its actual connection. So we're going to get the instance added and instance remove connections and connect the function to it. For the emitters, I'm going to loop through all of the instances called in and turn off the fire particle. And then for each window, I'm going to set their transparency to zero if it's called out. And if it's called in, the transparency is going to be 0.5.
and that's it um, everything is good just for the sake of showing you how it works or that it does work I'm going to set the call intervals to a, a much bigger number so I'm going to set each one to one All right, now once we play test and we go in, we're going to see that every particle that isn't within the field of view and isn't um, within 200 studs will be turned off and every particle that is within it will be turned off. A lot of it would be seamless if we left the call interval at 0 0.1 seconds, but now once we have it at 1 seconds, we can actually see that it turns on. So if we go to this campfire, for example, look away and then look back it's seamless now if we want to check for if it actually has we can go to the actual emit part and go to the fire particle and look away we can see that it's not enabled anymore once we look back it just turned it on now if we look away it'll turn off and once we look back it'll turn on same thing goes for all of these other particles in there, so that is also good. Now let's see for the window. So you look away, you can see that it's semi, it's fully opaque because its position is a lot further back than that. But once we look towards it, it'll go back to being uh, semi-transparent. And that's for all of these windows too. So you can see every time I look super fast, you can see how it's changing. Now that's with the call interval at one second, but to see it to see it at its default, which is 0 0.1 seconds, I'm just going to comment these out. And if we play test again, it's going to be a lot more seamless and your players are not even going to notice it, which is very good for optimizations. You don't want to see uh, things loading in the background. For, it's not a good player experience. So setting it to a pretty frequent call interval is probably better if you want to keep the same look and you want everything to be seamless but some things can um, some things can allow itself to be at a higher call interval but right now if I go back to the fire and check the fire now once I look away it's a lot faster enabled is false now it's true and it's completely seamless you don't even know it looks like it's been going on the entire time even though it's off right now now it's on same thing for the window if you look at each window i'm going to take this long one again boom i look back boom look back boom look back and that's for each one it's very seamless gamers will barely notice it they only notice it if they're looking for it. If not, then it's just another part of the game. And it looks like it's been there the whole time. So yeah, that is the calling service. It is very useful for things like that. There's another big one you can use it for, which is textures. Textures also take up a big part of memory and putting them all into your game at once and leaving them there is not the best idea if your client is not going to be uh, using those textures a lot. So. Um, dynamically instancing them, or not instancing them, dynamically like showing them and then making them disappear is definitely a lot better for the computer than to just leave them there. So that's another example. Anyway, that is the calling service. Um, hope you guys can use it. I want to see how you guys use it for what other op the, um, optimizations you have. And yeah, have a good day.